All right. Um, so I'm going to introduce both our guest speakers at this point. Um, so Amy Hertig is the capacity coordinator for the industrial engineering team in logic technology development at Intel. Uh, she has over 15 years of experience in the field and she leads a team that determines the type, quantity, and breakdown of the equipment needed to support and ramp Intel's world-class manufacturing and technology development engine. And Andrew Heinz is an engineering group leader in the logic technology development group at Intel. And he received his bachelor's degree in chemical engineering from Tulane University in 2004 and PhD in chemical and biomolecular engineering from Tulane in 2008. So thank you for coming. All right, hello, hello everyone. So uh, as you said, I'm Andrew. Um, I will be going first. So can I get a feel? I know Colette, so Colette, because she was actually in my engineering class last year. But is there anybody in here who actually wants to major in engineering? All right, that's a pretty good hand. So what made you want to be in engineering? You raise your hand, right? What, why, do you, why do you want to major in engineering? Um, I find design stuff and building stuff pretty interesting. And it also helps solve problems. Yeah, so you, so you want to solve problems, you want to build stuff, or you're pretty good at science and math, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, what's that? Engineer because like my dad does it might be a little hobby because I actually put the put the cable box together once but I tried. So you like building stuff as well and yeah. you're pretty good at science and math. Yeah. I take it right. He works in Intel too. The one in um, Aloha, uh, Aloha. He's in Aloha. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're both at Ramla, so probably don't run into him much. But so I think that's what we hear from a lot of people is they like playing around with stuff. They like building stuff. They're really good at science and math, right? But what does that actually mean? to you guys from an engineering standpoint. So that's what I want to talk about is actually how you're going to get there to be an engineer. So this is me. This is how I start every morning. I wear my bunny suit, we call it. I go into the factory where it's super clean. So a lot of people who I work with don't dress like this every day. Actually, we dress, I dressed up to come here today, right? We dress a little more casual. That's pretty common in engineering these days. Um, as he said, I got my bachelor's from Tulane in 04. I got my PhD from Tulane in 08. But the most important part, that pulsing part, is I actually graduated from Sunset High School in 2000. Right? So I know that makes me really old compared to you guys. I get it. But um, I'm glad to be back here and I'm glad that um, I can have a partnership with the school. All right, so what is an engineer? Colette, I'm going to pick on you. What is an engineer? So an engineer is someone who problem solves. She nailed it, right? So go ahead and click it. Simply put, engineer is a problem solver, right? Go ahead again. Thank you. So an engineer is a problem solver. So it doesn't matter whether you're a computer engineer, whether you're a chemical engineer like myself, mechanical, civil, whatever. Fundamentally, you're going to have a very technical skill set, and you're going to solve problems. If you're not solving problems, there's no reason for your employer to employ you, right? Otherwise, they could just go Wikipedia and find the answer, right? You're going to be solving problems that nobody knows the answer to. And that's a pretty cool prospect. All right, so engineers have, like we already talked about, solid fundamental background and technical knowledge. That's why when you hear, I'm sure everybody in here at some point has been told you're really good at math and science, maybe you should be an engineer. Has anybody heard that? I know I got told that all the time. Nobody else? Nobody else is good at math and science? Okay, <laughs> fair enough. All right, but the most important thing about an engineer is that you guys will, with your engineering training and your technical background, you guys will start to look at the world differently than other people do, right? Bad news is you'll no longer look at a sunset and be like, oh, that's pretty and it's magical. You'll know why the sunset is the way it is, right? You guys are already starting to get that being in your science courses and as you're learning now, right? Being an engineer, getting engineering training will forever train how you guys, or forever change how you guys view the world. Uh, we'll go skip this one, that's okay. Oh, lots of skips. All right, so the other reason you might want to be an engineer aside from just the fun of it is you get paid pretty well. Right, it's on the next slide. I actually have a comparison of starting salaries. This is from a couple years ago, but average starting salaries of engineers compared to everything else. Engineering, sixty-one thousand, roughly sixty-two k a year. Computer science, fifty-nine, followed by business, health sciences, math and science, education, and then humanities, all the way down. Right. So engineering is the number one average paid, and that's actually from two thousand twelve. So that's actually a long time ago. It's gone up since then. And does anybody know how many engineering disciplines are? Because I don't. There's a lot. 
There's a lot. Okay, hey, good. All right, so how are you going to become an engineer? What are you going to do? Are you going to go, what do you, does anybody think you need to go to school? What am I going to do in school? Learn. Okay, fair enough. So the first thing you need to do, if you want to be an engineer, you have to earn an engineering degree. It's pretty simple, right? You can't go earn a business degree and go be an engineer. But guess what you can do? You can go in an engineering degree and go work in business. So bachelor's required for everything. Most schools that you're gonna go to, right? Most of you, are, do we have juniors in here? Just a couple. Do we have any seniors in here? All right, so we got a lot of seniors. So you guys have already picked your schools at this point, right? You guys know where you're going next year? Great. So most institutions will give you an engineering degree in four years. There are some schools out there that do five-year programs, and what those schools do is they'll actually put you usually in job placement for one or two semesters throughout that. So you're still only technically going to school for four years, but it gives you experience in industry. So depending on how you want to approach it, you can choose both. If somebody's promising you a six-year degree or a two-year engineering degree, you need to look into it because that's probably not the right answer. Okay. Now, the first year of your engineering of your engineering education, you're going to be taking the same classes as pretty much every other engineer out there. This is what we call the foundational type stuff. So if you look at, this is just an example, but if you look at this, you're taking general chemistry, physics, you're taking, so you're taking chemistry, physics, and math. You guys are taking chemistry, physics, and math right now, basically, right? In some order, right? So it's just more advanced of that. You guys already have the basics of it, and you just need to continue to develop that. So you guys are already on track for engineering, if that's something you want to do. The next year is when you guys will start to get a little more specialized. So the first year, when you go into engineering school, you don't necessarily know need to know what type of engineer you want to be. The second year is when you're going to start getting into a little more specialization, and you'll kind of have to start picking a major at that point. So if you look here, for example, intro to biotech and biomolecular engineering, if you want to major in computer science, it's probably not the right class for you to take. So at that point, you're going to start deviating a little bit. By the time you get into your third year, you're going to be exceedingly specialized. You're not going to see your buddy from computer science anymore if you're a chemical engineer. You're not going to see your civil engineering friends anymore in classes because you're all going to be taking different stuff. And it's at this point that you pretty much have to pick your pony and ride it. Because if you change majors at this point, it's going to cost you a year. A lot, of, a lot of these classes in college for engineering school are only taught first or second semester, so it's not like you can take classes out of order. You have to take classes in a specific order. So if you were to, example, let's say get sick and miss a spring semester, you would have to wait a whole nother year to take those, right? So that's why changing majors this late in the game is not a good idea. So your first two years, figure out what you want to do, and then after that, commit to it. And then the last year, what's really cool about this last year, there's not as many classes on there. You're taking significantly less credits. There's a reason for that. It's because you're going to be doing highly project-based education, right? I know in the, for those of you who are in the engineering classes here, you guys do a lot of hands-on type education. You guys build stuff, you use the laser cutter. It's very similar. You guys are actually usually gonna be paired with somebody in the industry, and you're going to solve a very specific problem. Uh, Tulane last year, I know, they uh, had a group who was developing a diaper that diaper had an electronic signature or an electronic sensor in it that could actually let the nurses know when someone had wet themselves, right? So that sounds funny and all that, but if you think about it from a practical application, right? Let's say you're running a nursing home and you have to go have a nurse check everybody's bed every hour or three hours or whatever it is, right? Now instead, if somebody has an accident and the, all of a sudden your board lights up, you've just reduced head count and you've increased your patient response, right? So that's a simple, very simple type thing and it's, I know it's kind of silly, but it's a very practical thing. In a high school, or sorry, in a college level senior course was developing that product. That's pretty cool, right? So we kind of went out of order, right? So now I want to talk about how you're going to choose an engineering school. So is anybody here going into engineering school? <clears throat> anybody who raised their hand? I see a nod back there, but no hand. Yeah? All right, what's your name? Kenneth What's that? Kenneth Warren. Kenneth? So what made you, or what allowed you, where are you going first off? Uh, OSU. OSU? Good choice for engineering school. And why did you choose that, aside from the fact that it's a good engineering school? Yeah, that very good choice, good school. Okay. So, and you chose that because they had 
good reputation, yeah. they're going to be able to get you the education that you need. So excellent choice. All right, so selecting an engineering school is not the same as selecting a normal college for general education. And that's kind of why I'm here today to talk to you, right? For those of you who are sophomores, for those of you who are juniors, who are gonna start looking at what schools you wanna to go to, I want to kind of change what you're going to be looking at and considering, right? It's not all about rankings. So I'm not gonna sit here and tell you what school to go to. You've got college counselors that do that, you have teachers who do that, and your parents are probably all over you about that, right? What I'm gonna tell you is what I think you should be looking for when choosing a school, not where to go. Okay, so in order to get into a program, obviously you're gonna have to be good at science and math, but you're, and you're gonna have to show good grades and all that stuff. But what engineering schools are looking for for admissions on top of that is the ability to self-sustain, to drive yourself, right? Engineering school is hard compared to a lot of other majors. They want demonstrated, they want people to have demonstrated, students to have demonstrated that they can actually stick with it and make it. So what they're gonna be looking for is stuff outside the classroom, extra projects, maybe the fact that you took um, engineering class three times and you still somehow managed to deliver on your other classes, right? That's stuff they're going to look for. And one of the biggest things you can do, and I'm sure you hear this all the time, but go out and get involved, right? Habitat for Humanities is like a good program out there where you can go actually get hands-on stuff. And yeah, maybe you're only swinging a hammer, but you get to learn, right? Especially if you're a civil engineer, being a civil engineer who has experience actually building real stuff, that sounds like a pretty sellable product. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is reputation. So who here is going to go to an Ivy League school? Nobody? Nobody wants to go to an Ivy League school? I don't believe that for a minute. No one's parents are on them telling them they have to go Ivy League only. You have to go Ivy League? Yeah, right. And that's great. Ivy League schools are really good. But what if I told you that Ivy League schools don't actually have, by and large, the best engineering programs in the country? Right? So we go to the next slide. These are the top engineering school, or sorry, these are the um, Ivy League schools. And what you see here is their ranking for engineering schools. So Princeton is the number one ranked, or at least the year I did this, they were the number one ranked school in the country. But their engineering rank was 10. That means there are nine other schools that have a better ranked engineering program than Princeton. Harvard, nobody would argue that Harvard is a good school, right? Harvard is an amazing school, world renowned, but they are tied for 28th place in engineering school. That means that there's 27 other choices that are not only a better choice for you, or perhaps a better choice for you, but also perhaps way cheaper and way easier to get into. Okay, and it continues, right? Um, Stanford is number two. I do want to point out Stanford is a very, very good school, a very, very good engineering school. There's a lot of very top tier students there. And then this didn't come as a surprise to anybody, MIT is number one. So of course there's some Ivy Leagues that are in there, but again, the pure ranking doesn't tell the whole story. Okay. Um, yeah, so this is just a list of the best engineering schools. So MIT, Stanford, UC Berkeley, CIT, Georgia, UIUC. Um, Cornell is an IB as well. Princeton's down there and they're tied for 10, right? Uh, next slide, please. And we can skip that one, I already talked about that. So again, I wanna talk about Harvard, right? Does anybody here see a sweatshirts out there that say Harvard Engineering? I don't, but you'll see Harvard Law, you'll see Harvard Business, right? That's what that school is known for, not for engineering. So if you're going to a school based solely on reputation, I wanna to go to Notre Dame, I wanna to go to Harvard, I wanna to go to Princeton, right? Those are amazing schools, but make sure that you're going there for the reason that you want to go there, being your education, okay? So again, like I said, there are 27 other schools in the country that potentially be a better choice than Harvard when it comes to engineering. Okay, next please. And then on top of that, when you're looking at schools, it's not just about overall school ranking, it's about department ranking. An engineering program may be rated five, but the top school for chemical engineering, mechanical engineering, and computer engineering is MIT. Top school for civil engineering is Berkeley. Top school for biomedical engineering is John Hopkins. And the top environmental is the Stanford, right? So if you're looking for a specific major or you want to do a specific thing, don't just go to the best engineering school, go actually do your research and find what program you want, who you want to work for, and that side of stuff. 
So like I said, just do your research. Ranking should not dictate your decision. You should go and find a place that is a good fit for you and actually ed will be able to give you a good education for what you want. And then this is the thing that a lot of people don't realize. Has anybody ever heard of ABET accreditation before? Does anybody know what that means? What's that mean, Colette? It's if the school is actually certified to teach engineering. That's correct, to, to teach that particular type of engineering. So a lot of schools, or not a lot, some schools have accreditation in one type of major and not in another. So if they're accredited in, let's say, chemical engineering, and you want to major in computer engineering, they might not necessarily be accredited in both. So you want to make sure that you have accredited, because you want to get a degree, if you're going to get employed, you want a degree that's actually an accredited degree. So again, make sure to do your research specifically for that, not just looking at the college math. And then again, choose the best fit for you. There's a lot of other factors too, like are you gonna enjoy yourself, right? Are you, do you have friends at OSU? Do you not wanna have anybody who you know around, right? Whatever works for you personally, do you wanna go to big school, do you wanna go to small school, you need to find what works for you, because if you're not gonna be happy, you're not gonna succeed. So, what are you gonna do after your degree? Does anybody here want to go get an advanced degree? Right, I got my PhD, does anybody want a master's PhD? Anybody thinking about that? You do? Okay. Why? Uh, we'll get a higher-paying job. Okay. Help you get a higher-paying job? Okay. Fair enough. So postgraduate studies is a very real thing, right? You can either get your bachelor's and go into the workforce. Maybe a lot. Maybe you can go back and get your master's and go into the workforce. Or you can stay in school for a long time, getting paid very little, and get your PhD in four to seven years, right? So why would you go get a PhD? The answer is if you want to do something that's research-based. The reality is, don't get me wrong, I have a PhD, I'm happy I do, but if I was not doing the job that I was doing, which is research-based, it would have been a complete waste of my time to get a PhD because the time that I would have spent in industry, earning money and getting raises and getting promotions would have far offset the increase in salary that I had with the PhD, right? Because you're spending four to six years in school, getting paid roughly 20 grand a year being a TA, versus getting paid 60 to 70 a year in industry, getting raises, getting promotions. So in the end, you just need to make sure that it's what you want to do. If you want to come out and you just want to have a standard normal engineering job, maybe PhD and maybe master's isn't the right thing for you. Okay, so make sure you consider that. And then the last thing is, what can you do now to start? So, I like to say engineering your future, right? The first problem you have to solve is you, okay? You don't need to decide what your major will be or what job you want after you graduate, but all you need to do is start setting yourself up for success, right? You guys are taking science, you guys are taking math, you guys have an amazing engineering program here. I didn't have anything like this when I was, or since I didn't have anything like this when I was here, and just the opportunities, even at a basic level that you guys have with the engineering program is pretty awesome, I think. Um, so take that, right? Do everything you can to set yourself up for success and start taking the correct classes. If you know that chemical engineer, or if you know you want to be a biomedical engineer, right, make sure you get the biology as well as your physics and stuff, okay? And a little preparation now can go a long way towards success. Even if it feels like it's extra work now, chances are that knowledge, even if, even if you take a class now and you sit in college three years later and you're like, oh, I've seen all this stuff before. That's actually awesome for you that you've seen all that stuff before. Because you've got five other classes where you have no idea what's going on. Now you've got one guy that you actually have handled. Right? So put the work in now. It will definitely pay off for you later. Okay. And then the last thing I want to leave you with before I talk about some other stuff is remember you can do it. The reason that engineering is a highly paid field, the reason that engineering is a highly respected field is because it's hard. Right? We work hard. It's not easy, it's not cut and dry, you have to think about it, right? Just because you work 80 hours a week doesn't mean you're gonna solve the problem. You have to solve the problem, you have to work hard to do it, and you have to push yourself to do it. But the thing is, I know it's hard, but there's a lot of engineers out there, a lot of people have done it, and I highly suspect that a lot of you guys are smarter than a lot of them and can get it done, right? So it may be hard, it may be frustrating, but stick with it, you guys will succeed and you'll get it done, okay? So the last plug I wanna make is, and Colette's actually on there, Right, she's learning from uh, Nick. So this is my engineering class. This is what she was plugging earlier. Please take a flyer out if you want. This will kick off second semester next year. We teach on, or we do classes on Tuesdays at 6.30, okay? 
Um, yeah, so what we have up here, so uh, this was Colette actually learning from uh, my friend Nick. Nick works at a company called Brain Lab. They have a 3D technology that they actually use in uh, surgeries, brain surgeries and spinal surgeries. And Colette was using it on a fake spine. It was a plastic rubber spine. She didn't kill anybody, it's okay. Um, and then uh, we have class from two years ago. This was our distillation lab. We didn't catch anything on fire that day, so all right. Um, yeah, but what I'm looking for specifically is sophomores and juniors in this class. Seniors, you're welcome to take it, but we give preference to the lower guys because seniors, you guys already know where you're going. So what we're trying to do with this class is give a little more direction, help people figure out what fields they want to go into, what schools they might want to go into, and if engineering's for them. You seniors, you guys already have life figured out. You don't need my help anymore. Okay, so if you're interested in this, I'll be hanging out in the back, take a flyer. I will be here next week. I don't remember what day it is. I think it's, it says right there, right? Somewhere, what, Tuesday? So I'll be here on Tuesday and I'll see anybody who wants to come, we'll be right here. Okay, I think that's it. So does anybody have any questions for me? Perfect, they answered everything I did perfectly. Oh, I do have a question, yes sir. Uh, I did not. It's, it's actually not, um, it's not uncommon in, or it's, it's pretty normal in engineering education to skip the master's because the, the PhD is very much research based, right? So, and master's tend to be a little more class based with some project based. So it's not uncommon to actually skip the master's degree um, and just go right into a PhD program. And that saves time, right? Like I was able to get my PhD in four years, which is pretty fast. And if I had to take two years getting a master's, it would have take another two years, right? Yes, sir. Colleges that, like, uh, are that, like, have good engineering programs, like, usually, like, a lot more expensive than, like, regular colleges? No, and that's, that's a very smart question, and that's actually not the case. A lot of, some, so, so, uh, many of the really top-rated engineering programs out there are actually at state schools, which keeps it down. Now, of course, there's the in-state, out-of-state thing you have to consider, but, I mean, think about it. A couple of those on that list were uh, UC Berkeley, CIT, right, which are both in California. Those are state schools. Um, and I mean, like the Harvard example, like Harvard is not a cheap school for obvious reasons, right? So you're actually looking at a more expensive school for a less valuable engineering program there, right? Stanford also is very expensive. St don't get me wrong, Stanford is a top-notch engineering school, no problem. But um, no, the, they are not necessarily more expensive. Now, that comes with a caveat of the schools that have um, the better labs and stuff are obviously going to be better funded. but. A lot of the times that funding actually comes from like an industry partner and not actually from tuition, right? So if they have super amazing lab space, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be paying for it. Somebody else has probably given them a grant, maybe some old rich guy died and built them a building, something like that, right? I mean, that's that's very common in education. Yes, sir. Um, I don't know if you mentioned it, but what college did you go to? I went to Tulane, okay. which is in New, New Orleans. Mm -hmm. um, they have... It was the third old. It's the third oldest chemical engineering department in the country. That's why I went there. Um, they used to back in the day have really good partnership with oil and gas. Not as much anymore, as that's kind of fallen out of favor. Mm -hmm. um. Yes, ma'am. Um, I was thinking that my mom told me that she was going to go to Tulane, but she didn't want to graduate engineering, and decided. Portland State has a very good engineering program as well. Actually, we have, se we have, I should say, it's more than several, but we've had many people from Intel actually work at Intel while doing like a graduate degree at Portland State. And that way Intel can actually help offset some of that cost. So yeah, Portland State has a very excellent engineering program as well. And then the other nice thing, Portland State, especially if you're from here, is you can live at home and, right, so it makes college a lot cheaper and a lot more accessible. All right, we'll take the last question. We'll get to Amy, yes, sir. All right, so for like aerospace engineering, like, with that field, could you like also work on engineering? And if you wanted to have like the option to like be a pilot, could that also be? So I mean that that would have to be up to your personal preference. The 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 thing I want to leave you with most important is getting your engineering degree opens doors to everything. But if you don't have an engineering degree, you can't be an engineer. So if you want to be an engineer, pilot, pilot engineer, whatever, go for it. But if you go be a pilot, you're not going to be able to be an engineer without being an engineer. Make sense? Yeah, it's, it's kind of non-transferable. It stinks, that's just the way it is, right? People aren't gonna look. The engineers are trained very differently in school than other majors. So getting that training is applicable elsewhere, but not getting that training doesn't help you the other way around, okay? 
All right, well, thank you guys very much. Uh, at this point, I'm gonna transfer off to Ms. Hertig. Uh, take a oh, we're gonna take a break, sorry. <laughs> thank you.